What is up guys and welcome back to another video and we have got a treat for you of another tutorial today and that is on how to properly progress to doing a thoracic bridge. Now this isn't one of the most glamorous of moves that you can do but it is an absolute fundamental body weight exercise. It is so important for maintaining healthy shoulders, for getting proper development in a straight line handstand because it will help you open up your thoracic. Uh, it's good for developing proper scapular movement and a really strong back. Uh, and it's gonna help you condition your wrists and improve your mobility there, which is gonna translate over to so much other stuff, including um, your planche and then also your front lever from that scapular development. Either way, this exercise is absolutely essential. And if you're not doing it, then you need to start doing it. So, and I'm gonna help you do that today. So before we jump into today's progressions, I want to make sure you guys have some sort of idea of what the prerequisites would be before starting to attempt any of these. So the bridge is gonna be quite an intense exercise on your wrists and your shoulders. So for this, I would recommend having, at least being comfortable with being upside down on a handstand. I would say no more than a wall handstand is necessary to start training the bridge, but you need to be comfortable with going upside down because that's essentially what position you're gonna be in when you get into the bridge. So the first prerequisite would be doing a handstand against the wall. The second would be having some sort of wrist conditioning. So if you've done a lot of push-ups or some handstand work, then you'll have some sort of wrist conditioning. But this is gonna be quite an intense exercise on your wrist. They're gonna be in an extremely um, challenged position. So you wanna make sure your wrists are nice and strong for that. Uh, I did make a wrist preparation video a few videos back. So I'll put a link down in the description below to that. And you can just start incorporating that on a daily basis. So now we've got the prerequisites out of the way, I wanna split this video into four parts. The first part, is going to be the sort of common issues with people's bridges. And this is basically gonna help you inform what you need to do alongside your bridge training to make sure you get the most results out of this. Because the bridge is such a complex challenge of mobility, there is actually quite a few places that you can be tight or you can be wrong in that will throw it off completely. So it's not gonna be the same for everyone. There'll be a few common mistakes though. So I'm gonna go through those first. Then I'm gonna jump into the sets and reps because that is very consistent throughout all the progressions used here, except the advanced ones, and I will detail them specifically later on. Then we're gonna jump into the progressions, and that is the nice, enjoyable bit. And we're gonna have some really, really, from basic beginner progressions all the way up to some advanced and then the full bridge. And then finally, we're gonna have some fun exercises that you can throw in along the way to make your training a little bit more enjoyable. So let's get on to the common challenges that people come across when they're training the bridge. Now I'm not gonna detail how to fix every single one of these issues um, because the video would be like an hour long if I went into it in detail. Instead what I will do is I will explain to you the problem, I will tell you how to see if you have this problem and then I'll provide you guys with a link in the description down below to somebody who has done a very good tutorial on how to stretch or adjust that particular part. There's no point in reinventing the wheel and me going through all these exercises that people have already done and shown how to do well. So the first common issue that you see is having tight hip flexors. Now you'd be surprised by the amount of people who can actually get good shoulder mobility, but they can't do a bridge because they have really tight hip flexors. It's very common in Western society because we sit down a lot. So there's, you know, you're always in that flexed position. We often get tight hip flexors, get that anterior pelvic tilt going on. This is really gonna make our bridge a lot more challenging simply because you need to have that nice open hips when you're in a fully extended bridge. What you often see is people overcompensating with their lower back. So this is why people get lower back pain when they're doing the bridge. A simple way to, stretch, uh, to fix this would simply be alongside your bridge training in your resting periods, just stretch out your hip flexors. I'll put again, as I said, a link to a couple of examples of stretches that I would recommend for the hip flexor in the description down below. Um, and I would just be performing these in between my sets when I train the bridge. The next issue that you see a lot is tight lats. And I would say this is probably the most common uh, issue with performing the bridge and it often extends into having tight triceps as well. So what you'll see here is kind of a lack of thoracic mobility. You won't be able to get your hand, uh, your arms past parallel with your shoulders. You might even not even be able to straighten your arms when you're in that bridge position. And this is generally due to just training and working out. Um, so this is pretty common, but it's very easily fixed. Now my man Emmett Lewis, who does some incredible videos on loaded mobility, has like an entire series on how to loosen up your lats for improving your hand side alignment. 
and we can use the same principles here for improving our bridge as well. So all I'm going to do is in the description down below you can go and I've made a playlist of all the videos that he put up and I've also linked to the blog post that he did about it and you can read on there exactly how to incorporate this lat stretching um, and opening up your shoulders into your training and I'd recommend what he recommends on his blog post and that's performing it two or three times a week. So you can do this in uh, with your bridge training if it suits but you can always perform it separately you're still going to get the benefits. And then the final issue is usually a hypermobile back. Now this is actually usually caused by either problem one that type hip flexor or problem two the tight lats and your body is basically going to overcompensate because it can't get the range of motion in this thoracic extension here and it can't get it in the hips then all it's going to do is it's going to put that mobility into your lower back. So this is why a lot of people have lower back pain when they do the bridge. Uh, and I would say that this will generally be fixed by fixing the first two problems. Now we've got the common mistakes out of the way, it is very important that we mention that because when you get into the progressions later on, I think it's important to film your first attempts, have a look at your attempt, see where your problems are, and then you apply that to you in addition to your bridge training. So talking about training, let's jump into the sets and reps that I would prescribe for training the bridge. So there's two ways you can go about this. The first way would be going for a high frequency, lower volume approach. And in this we're gonna do, we're gonna train the bridge about two to three times a week. And simply, simply we are just gonna train it for three sets of 30 seconds. And that is it, three times a week and you will see some amazing results just by doing this. A lot of the issue people have with bodyweight training is that they simply don't put the consistency in. If you put the consistency in, then results will come. Um, if you watch my project Blanche, kind of put bridge mobility in as like, I was kind of interested in improving it, but I wasn't too bothered. But that was the first time I've actually done the bridge consistently, two to three times a week. And I saw a massive improvement in my bridge. So I would say just, be consistent. So that's why I put in the first option as doing the high frequency three times a week, three sets of 30 seconds. And that is all you're going to need to do. And that will apply to pretty much any progression unless I tell you otherwise in the progressions part of this video. The second option you can do is the opposite where you do low frequency, high volume. In this, you would probably just train it once a week, but you do somewhere between six and eight sets of that 30 second hold again. The results will probably be similar, but the only issue with the second method is that you will probably be pretty damn sore after you finish that day. So I personally like doing the lower volume, higher frequency training in and around my training, sometimes on rest days, rather than taking out one specific day for just doing the bridge and then being really quite sore afterwards. Both of the options that we have, we're gonna have a volume of about six to nine sets a week. So now we've got the common issues, we've got the reps and sets. Now let's move on to the progressions. And this is how you're gonna assess if you're making any of those common mistakes. So before we jump into any of these progressions, we're going to want to warm up. As I said in the sort of benefits of doing this, this is a scapula, this is a back intensive and also a wrist intensive exercise. So we're gonna to want to warm up those sections to begin with. I would recommend for warming up, you're gonna to want to do kind of a general warm up of your upper body and then using Edo Portal's scapular mobilization, mobilization routine with the band. This is a really good way of getting some movement in that thoracic section of your chest and it's gonna prepare you well for the bridge. I'll put a link down in the description below, but over the top of me talking about this, there will also be an example of me doing it as well. All you're gonna need is a band for this exercise. The second one I want you to do is going to be my wrist routine from my wrist video that I also mentioned earlier in the video. And again, you can check that out in the description down below, but I'll put a little clip in briefly. The third step I would like you to do is some either Edo Portal rotations against the wall, which are essentially gonna stand about half a meter out from the wall. You're gonna swing round with your hand, place it onto the wall, play, meet your other hand to it, kind of make kind of basically a bridge position against the wall and then twist back round. This is really great as a low level exercise just for warming up and getting some blood flow into the muscles that you're gonna be using. The next exercise we're gonna do is some floor bridge semi rotation. So basically we're gonna be doing a similar movement to what we just did on the wall, but we're not gonna be going as far, we're not gonna be going all the way around, we're just gonna be jumping into the first part of that movement. So we wanna start in a squat, turn around, place your hand a good meter or so behind you. You're then gonna to want to try to rotate a bit, push up, 
push up with your hips, get into the sort of start of a bridge position and then come back down. And we're gonna to want to do five to 10 reps on each side with that movement. This is gonna give us a really great stretch, stretch in our pecs and our biceps, and as well, it's gonna help warm up those wrists a little bit more. And that is basically it, guys. We are now gonna be warmed up, and then we can hop straight into progression. When we are training the bridge, we wanna follow one golden rule. And that golden rule is that your shoulders want to be over or in front of your hands. Uh, and then this is just a principle for training and knowing how to select an appropriate progression for you. If you select a progression that's too challenging, you're not gonna be able to get your shoulders over your hands and you're not gonna be able to get the full um, potential you could out of that exercise. The simplest progression you can do is going to be a very basic hollow back handstand. So what you're gonna do here, you're gonna wanna have your hands probably about half a foot out from the wall, is you're gonna kick up into a handstand against the wall. We're gonna push as high as we can, making ourselves as tall as possible. You're then gonna want to try and sit your bum into the wall and push your scapula through your shoulders. So you're gonna, you're gonna be in a very, very basic bridge position with your chest, but your legs are gonna be way above your hands. And again, you wanna be making sure that your shoulders are over or beyond your hands. And this is the very basic position. The next progression on from this follows a very similar line. All it's gonna be is an L position hollow back handstand. So this time we're gonna position our hands probably about 30 to 50 centimeters out from the wall. So about half a meter out from the wall, give yourself some space. You wanna kick up, you're probably gonna be in quite an arch to begin with. You're gonna to wanna to push as high as you can, just as before, through your shoulders. You're then gonna to wanna to sit your bum back against the wall this time. But because your hands are further out, then we're gonna make a bigger arch in our shoulders. So again, you're gonna be wanting to push your scapula through your shoulders, really open up your chest, get into what is essentially a bridge position, but your feet are just gonna be taken, or your legs are gonna be taken out of the equation. That would be the first progression, the absolute beginner, and then the beginner plus sort of progression. Once you feel pretty comfortable in that position at 30 second holds, I would suggest moving on to just an elevated feet bridge. Now, all you're gonna do here is get yourself something to elevate your feet with, whether that's a box at the gym, whether it's a chair, whether it's a wall, whatever, you just need to find an appropriate height to elevate your feet. Again, we wanna follow that golden rule of having our shoulders either over or beyond our hands. So when you find the right size support for you, you're gonna elevate your feet onto it while you're lying on your back on the ground. You're gonna put your arms behind you, and then this is the tough bit, but hopefully you should have built some strength with your other training. We're gonna push ourselves up into that bridge position. And then what you're gonna do is, as before, push as high as you can with your arms. And then you're gonna use your feet to push against the objects that you're on. And then you're gonna push that scapula through again. So you're gonna be basically in a bridge position, but instead of having a, uh, a flat surface to work on, you've kind of got your feet elevated. So your legs are now gonna start coming into play. This is where you're gonna test your hip flexor ability, but you're still gonna be under a good advantage by having those feet elevated. How you'd progress on from this is essentially you're gonna keep lowering that elevation. I would recommend videoing it so you can see every single time that you're making sure your shoulders are either above or beyond your hands and keep lowering your feet until eventually you're gonna hit the floor. And that's when we get to the final progression. And that is the basically end goal. And that's being able to achieve a full thoracic bridge. Again, when you get to this full bridge, you're gonna really wanna focus on being as tall as possible and really pushing through and trying to squeeze your ears with your shoulders, really push your scapula through and open that chest up and tense those glutes. And that is essentially it. That is about as easy as the progressions get and as simple as they get, but still really, really effective. You elevate the feet. That is basically it. You're gonna start from that handstand position, work down into the L sit, hollow back handstand. Eventually we're gonna to go to a elevated feet bridge. And this is where I reckon, this is where I think that most people will start when training the bridge. And then we're gonna move on into the full bridge. So now for the fourth and final part, I wanna talk about some exciting exercises or somewhat exciting exercises that you guys can throw in along the way. The first would be the bridge push-up. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing this in the elevated or the handstand position because it's actually harder. But when you get into almost a full bridge, then you can start repping out some bridge push-ups. Uh, it's another cool exercise just to kind of mix things up a bit. It's gonna help develop your bridge just as quickly 
You probably can do this if you're getting close to a full bridge on the floor. That's kind of that little extra push by training a bit into that floor range of motion because you'll be a little bit of an advantage by pushing up. The second would be bridge rotations. Again, this is probably something you could play with when you get closer to a lower feet elevated bridge or a full bridge. Now, this is Ido Portal inspired by the way he has videos on it. Again, I'll link to them in the description, but essentially you're gonna sit in a squat. Just like our warm up exercise, you're gonna put your hand back behind you. You're gonna push on up and twist into a bridge and then twist out the opposite direction. Um, there's not real any way to kind of do this. It's kind of just go with the flow. You don't have to have straight arms, you can have bent arms. Uh, it's just good for, again, building up those posterior muscles and just having a play and having some fun. Alternatively, you can use, like in our warm up, the wall assisted rotational bridge. So you're gonna stand about that meter away from the wall and do the same movement. Those two exercises I would recommend doing for between eight and 12 reps. With the bridge rotations, you wanna do one rotation round. So starting going onto your right hand all around to your left hand, that's one rep. So if you go round one way and back the other way, that's two reps. So eight and 12 reps for both the push up and the rotations are a good place to have fun with. So to recap the video, it's pretty simple. First of all, we're gonna to wanna to warm up before we do our exercises. We're then gonna to want to pick a progression that allows us to have our shoulders over our hands. We're then gonna film it because that is very important. We're gonna have a look at it. Are our hip flexors tight? Are our lats tight? Have we got an excessive arch in our lower back? Have a think about it. Incorporate the exercises that I linked in the description down below into your training and just be consciously aware of it when you're training and I'm sure you will get the thoracic bridge in no time. As I mentioned before in this video guys, the bridge is just about consistency. You will get the bridge. It's just a matter of time. The common issue that a lot of people do is they get kind of bored of it or they can't do it so they give up and they don't bother training it. Um, whereas that's the worst thing you can do. All you need to do is try and just keep trying repeatedly until you get it. Um, so consistency guys, as I recommended, three times a week, three sets of 30 seconds or once a week, six to eight sets of 30 seconds. And that's as simple as it gets. So thank you guys for watching this video. As I said, everything I talk about today will be detailed in the description down below. I keep maxing out the character limit, but hopefully you guys find it really helpful. If you enjoyed this video, and you found it helpful and you think you're going to go and smash the bridge, then hit a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I always reply to comments. Um, and if you thought this was a really good story, then please share it with a friend share it on Reddit. Do whatever you want to do. So that has been it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a strong week and peace.